Hey, what's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in this video. In this one, we're gonna learn how to preserve the glow of the paper. And we'll do this by using relatively lighter uh, layers because a big element in watercolor painting is the light hitting the paper white and returning to the viewer's eye. So we'll learn how to preserve that using this very unusual subject, something I don't paint as much, clothes, fashion, stuff like that, which works out perfectly because this was actually yesterday's Washtober prompt. Jeans. I'm sorry there isn't a live video. As a side note, I couldn't do one this week, so you're getting a video instead, but next week we'll have one. So in any case, without further ado, let's jump into the process. Okay, so I did skip the drawing stage just to save some time. Feel free to use any method like, um, you know, uh, measuring or even tracing, uh, whatever you want to get it onto the paper. Uh, but here's the key for this process. What I want to do here is really uh, make sure I start light and lighter than usual so that the transparency of the paint is visible. The thing with watercolor is because they're transparent, uh, you want to use usually this property to really bring out the best in them. And if you go very dark, you start to lose that. The beauty is the light hitting the page and going back into the viewer's eye with the color that's on top of it. And because it's a very transparent color, that's a part of where the beauty comes from. So I wanted to start slow with this process and really preserve that. Now, one key thing I'm doing here is, if you notice, I'm really merging uh, the jeans with the background uh, in some sections. Now, why do I do that? Because I want this initial wash to uh, establish some kind of a unity. I don't want the, the jeans and the legs essentially to feel like they're uh, a cutout or a part that is detached from the background. So I do this thing. I also show this in the how to paint people in two steps, which I will link uh, top right corner probably, people in two steps, um, of merging um, the object with its uh, surrounding. And, and that's kind of like uh, what Udes Correa does. It really makes it feel unified. Now, uh, into this uh, wet wash, I could add a bit more blue, make it a little stronger, a little darker. And the key is I preserved the paper's beauty while also establishing some kind of a scheme for the colors and for the temperature and all of that. Now, I do combine this wash as soon as I can with some of the shadows uh, on the socks, okay, due to the socks pattern, which is, I think, really uh, nice looking. And I'm also using a tissue just to dab out some areas that are a little too hard of an edge. Uh, and that really merges things together. Now, my apologies, I missed that I just didn't hit record for the bottom part. So sorry about that. Uh, we'll go straight into the next layer, but trust me, there is a lot more to this process and it's all real time, okay? So you really wanna follow. Now, I'm starting to establish the final value for this thing. And because I'm working gradually, uh, I am able to make sure I don't go too dark and then lose again that beautiful transparency of the color and the, the light shining on the paper. Uh, so I'm starting with a, a value, a certain value of this blue color. On top of that, I add more to dark in the left section. Because if you look at the reference photo, again, the left side is much darker. So I rework the area and make it a little more and more dark, okay? Now we wanna make sure to push it a little further more than you would necessarily think because it is going to uh, dry a little lighter as always, okay? Uh, now also on the right section, you'll notice how it's slowly getting darker. But what I do wanna do is leave a light gap for the seam line. So you see, I'm just leaving this small gap. Now, luckily for me, I was able to pretty much nail a very accurate color here. Uh, so it, the impression is really good in my opinion. And I broke off this seam line just by adding a few more dots because it, it actually is broken. Uh, so that's a nice way to go about it. And what I'm doing now is starting to establish some of the very mild shadows on the part that's folded. I don't remember what you'd call this part, but um, on the you'll notice on the left side and on the right side, as it turns away from us, less light can get to it. Um, maybe they used some flash or some um, you know external lighting source. Uh, unnatural one, uh, so the edges are a little darker. Sometimes it's also due to the texture of the fabric, and I'm slowly merging and, and blending it towards the middle, okay? Now, at this point, I'm also establishing that shadow you see underneath uh, this folded part. Uh, and then we'll also be able to move on to the left side and merge these two washes together, which is gonna look really good. 
Um, and while I, while I can, I just put in some of the darker details, wet and wet. The reason why is that I'm fine with them blending. Okay, so I, I went ahead and just put it while it's wet. Now, same for this section. This leg is a little more behind. So yes, it's a little darker, not much. Um, and you could make a choice, an artistic choice, to make it darker than it actually is, just to differentiate the two. That's something that can uh, work out quite nicely, or you could leave it in kind of the similar value. I darkened it just very gently. Now you'll notice how some areas are still wet and they're touching and blending together. I'm actually fine with that in this point. You see how it blends towards the folded part of the other leg? I'm fine with that. Um, because mainly I, I don't care if in the shadows there is some blurriness, okay? Plus we also got enough hard edges in the contours of the jeans. Remember, in the first wash, I merged them with the background, but still, I went a little darker now. So we get a clear edge in the lights. I'm fine with getting a more blended edge in the shadows. I'm basically repeating the process for the left side as well, um, putting in the star strong shadows where I see them and, and so on. Just fix this shape a bit because of the blending together, which I don't mind. I just wanted to fix the shape a little bit. Uh, now we can move on also to the other leg, the upper part. Uh, this is pretty much dry, so it won't blend too much, which is good. Now here's a fun thing I like to do sometimes. I'm, I'll put in the dark values. Um, where I see them. So we have the two folds and then the right side of the leg. And then what I'll do is come back with very watered down paint, like almost watery. And you'll see how these will combine together in a way that will preserve the shadowy parts as well. I'm not going to leave that white gap, so we'll, <laughs> we'll get rid of that. Um, and you'll see how it's, it's a nice way of getting in starting with the darks actually rather than the lights. And sometimes it works quite nicely as you can see here. Um, now, as everything is going to light up, I'm going to go over it with a bit more dark paint. And already you can tell that there is a really nice impression here. Um, <clears throat> you can very easily, obviously, look at what, uh, understand what you're looking at. Um, and I think the jeans work really well. And they're pretty much done uh, at this stage. So we can move on to the shoes. Now, here I was at a bit of a, um, a, bit of a problem because the color of the shoes in the picture is very strong. It's very saturated and bright. Now... Honestly, I still n am not that confident in getting that effect. Um, I do need to figure out how to do that. I think the best way would actually be to get an opaque color that's as that's the exact same uh, value and, and strength, uh, which I don't have at the moment. Probably could have used some Pyrrole Scarlet, but still. Uh, obviously, the best bet would be to get it in the right in the first wash, but as you've seen, I wasn't able to. So I'm kind of darkening it a little bit. It is darker than it appears, and also trying to make it a little more saturated. Um, I, I'm doing the best I can. It's not going to hurt the overall impression. It's going to be okay, but uh, ideally, this is something I want to practice doing. And again, it's one of those things, just like the last video, where I showed you this tall tower uh, with the, that I added the darker red, but very pure. Uh, it's one of those things I still haven't really figured out, and hopefully I will uh, in the near future. Uh, I will pr work on that in particular and probably come back with some of my insights. Uh, but a lot of the magic is going to come from the darks. So here I am adding some of these uh, areas that are extra dark because they're going to make the light red look a little lighter. Now, obviously, I haven't used the same red as well. Uh, the red in the photo is much more... Uh, it's much more red. It's a bit, even a bit pink, or I don't know what you'd uh, define this exactly as, uh, but it's quite strong. And uh, mine is a little more muted naturally, like out of the pen. It's a little more muted. It has nothing to do with mixing. Uh, so yeah, the color selection does matter if you're aiming for a very specific impression. But as you've seen, I'm using my own colors, and I was able to, I believe, get the the, the overall thing to look just like I wanted. So you don't have to. Uh, be very um, adamant about the colors, but if you do want to uh, achieve a specific effect, go ahead, get the specific pigment, like maybe getting an actual very neon-like uh, magenta color would have worked better for this instance. Uh, now, one thing I want to avoid is having things too rigid. So what I'm going to do is probably just use a bit of water and spread out the dark paint here, you see, just like that. Just moving it a bit around so that it's not too dark almost, you know. Uh, and with that, we're actually really near the end. All that's left is to add some shadows to the laces, uh, to add some final touches and details and shadows wherever is necessary and will be done. So first, I'm starting with this sock on the left. 
it doesn't really have that shadow in it. Uh, I just, it felt too empty to me. So I'm adding this shadow to the sides and top. Top, I just assume there's a shadow under the jeans, uh, under the folded part. Uh, and yeah, now I'm adding this shadow to the laces. Um, just, it's gonna give them some kind of a depth. Uh, ideally, I should have probably covered the ones underneath as well. Uh, the, the laces that are straight on, not the tied part, uh, the knot part. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna add some of that same dark, kind of dry brushy details to the jeans, only to some selected places. Um, not going overboard here, really. Uh, I really like the way they look at the moment, so I don't want to ruin that impression. So it's just gonna be a few touches for you know folds and creases that I feel didn't get enough uh, definition. It's almost a compositional means by that time. It's not even like actually getting the right value or anything like that. And now I'm gonna give you a look at the final result. I really hope you enjoy this one. Let's wrap it up. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and seeing a bit of an unusual subject. I actually had a surprisingly good time painting this, which means I may do more of these style of paintings. I do love uh, painting clothes and fashion. I just don't get to do that as much because I go for the more traditional subjects, but this is definitely something I'm gonna try. I'm usually deterred by the lack of strong contrast, but I guess as long as you nail the values and you have them somewhat accurately, um, it's going to work out and also I have changed quite a bit. I removed almost all of the background still works beautifully um, So you can change quite a lot and still keep the spirit of whatever it is you want to convey So I want to thank you so much Don't forget to check out in the link below my uh, frustration free watercolor course If you want to learn how to let go enjoy the painting process paint freely Thank you so much to anyone who got it and thank you so much to anyone who watched this video who liked left a comment down below um, It really matters and it really helps me reach more people and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.